my story with uh, the cancer that I was working with, pancreatic cancer, began when a scared 13-year-old boy was sitting in the hospital room and found out that a close family friend who was like an uncle had just passed from cancer after three, three to six months of having it. And he became very mad, very, very mad. And suddenly he started not really doing anything at all in school whatsoever. His grades slipped and he couldn't really find any motivation to do anything. I was kind of lost at the time. However, then I had an idea. Maybe with the internet, my best friend for knowledge, I could find a bit more about this mysterious assassin that had taken my uncle. So I went online and I found some statistics on pancreatic cancer. What I found is that there was a very grim story when it came to cancer. 85% of all pancreatic cancers are diagnosed late. When someone has less than a 2% chance of survival, why are we so bad at detecting pancreatic cancer? The reason our current modern medicine is a 60-year-old technique. I mean, that's older than my dad. I mean, we have to do better than that. You don't see me carrying around a computer from six years ago. I mean, I couldn't carry one of those things around. But also, it costs $800 per test and is grossly inaccurate, missing 30% of all cancers. So after I learned this, I decided I'm going to do something about it. And armed with my ninth grade biology and some Google papers, I went with a broad expectation of revolutionizing cancer. And it actually happened, to much to my surprise. <laughs> 10 months later, after emailing 200 professors, getting 199 rejections, spending seven months in the lab, like blowing up my cells 50 times, I finally ended up with one small paper sensor that costs three cents and takes five minutes to run. This makes it 168 times faster, over 26,000 times less expensive, and over 400 times more sensitive than our current standards of detection. But also, it can detect the cancer in the earliest stages, when someone has close to a 100% chance of survival. But also, it's 100% accurate, so it could lift the survival rate of pancreatic cancer from 5.5% to close to 100%. And by switching out a component, you could pretty much detect any disease in the earliest stages, ranging from heart disease, Alzheimer's, other forms of cancer, even HIV AIDS. However, there's a problem with that. It, it seems like a really nice picture, but there's always that like crack in the mirror. Unfortunately, it's based on antibodies. And take it from me, antibodies are like terrible. To me, that, like I'm oil, they are water. We don't mix. Me and antibodies are like an immortal combat to the end. They denature so rapidly, and I hate them. But also, they can only target one protein. The main mission of what we're going to have to be going towards in the future of medicine is being able to look at all diseases, and that's what the Tricorder X Prize is. So with that bit of inspiration and mixed with a bit of hate, as every great inspiration comes with, I've decided to compete in the Tricorder X Prize of the team of all high school students. So, <laughs> so what I'm bringing to it is essentially I create something called a ROM spectrometer, and you're thinking, is that something with those noodles? But no, ramen, it's just not for noodles anymore. <laughs> Essentially, you use a laser to look at a sample. And based on how that laser interacts with the sample, you can tell the exact chemical composition of it. And however, there's a downfall. These things have really cool applications. Like you can tinker with them and make them detect different forms of cancer. You can look at environmental contaminants, also look at explosives. However, they cost $100,000, and I just don't have $100,000 to shell out on the ROM spectrometer. And then also, there's the size of a small car, and my mom has put up with a lot. I mean, like, she let me culture E. coli, but she's not going to let me, like, ship in this giant, like, thing into my room to tinker with. So I decide, why can't I make a simple one that's really inexpensive, just like I did with those paper sensors? And I've done that as well. I, I have the luck of uh, making things simple and inexpensive. Essentially, I made one that costs $4, is the size of a sugar cube, and weighs less than a penny. It can detect a single molecule of um, an explosive, making it 10,000 times more sensitive than a sniffer dog. But also, it can detect cancer, as well as environmental contaminants. And so, that's only one part of this problem that we're looking at, about making it such that we can look at any disease. And there are great steps going forward. And there's one thing that we're going to have to look at, and this is my vision. 
the proteome. The proteome, it sounds a lot like genome. You can probably make some fancy rhyme out of that. However, essentially it's like your entire protein expression in your tissues, in your bloodstream, pretty much everything. And using this, you could be able to detect disease early. You could, look, you could customize a single protein and like fold it really exactly to target only that one cell. And so that's the ultimate N equals one personalized medicine paradigm there. However, nothing was really happening there. But we haven't really seen any work on that. And we really need this because in my opinion, frankly, it's going to kick the genomic revolution's ass. You would be able to do so much stuff with this. And so what we're going to really need is a sensor that you'd be able to look into your bloodstream and constantly monitor on a daily basis your entire protein expression. But also then, you would have to have an algorithm that transfers all that knowledge into being able to track it over time. And then we would be able to know so much about you and we'd be able to immediately, like, we, could connect to that. we could connect that to your genome and say, hey, you're probably going to get this like at age 41 and preemptively treat that such that it costs you maybe like $5 to get treated for a disease. And so that's what the proteome will bring. The protein will revolutionize medicine. And with that, we'll be able to live longer, happier, and stronger lives. A bunch of people are pessimistic, as always. Adora might be the glass half empty girl over there. But imagine this. I'm a 15 year old when I came up, actually 14 year old when I came up with this idea for a pancreatic cancer detection. I didn't know where a pancreas was. So it was a bit of a low baseline there of knowledge. <laughs> but using just Google and Wikipedia, I found a new way to detect pancreatic cancer. So if I could do that, just imagine what you could do. Thank you. Well, <laughs>